This is the Sony a6700, and in my opinion, it's probably one of the best cameras you can get right now. And the reason for that is it's small, it's lightweight, it has a really good grip on it. I can easily click through all my settings right here. It has enough custom buttons for what I need, and it's also just easy to hold, it's lightweight, I can put it on pretty much any lens where I couldn't do this with my other smaller camera bodies like the a7C, and it just feels really nice in the hand. I've been on the search for like the perfect camera body for a really long time, and I've come to find that this is that camera body. Now, recently Sony released the a7C II and the a7CR, and I think both those cameras are really good, but what they lack is they don't have that same ergonomic grip that's found in this camera body. And I think that is kind of a deal breaker for me. That's the main reason why I decided to get this camera instead. And also, this is just an incredible value for what you purchase. At around $1,400, it's gonna be way cheaper than any other full frame camera. And the lenses that you can now buy with Sony APS-C are so much better than they used to be. And I just feel that they are lighter, they're more compact, they're easier to carry around. So if you do any travel photography or wedding photography and you're just looking for like a lighter setup in general, I think this is the camera to get. Now the a7C II I think is a really cam good camera too, but it's just, it's lacking that one feature. Well, it's actually, there's two features, but the one big fe feature for me is it doesn't have as good of an ergonomic grip. Now it, the other feature that I don't like about the a7C II is it doesn't have a good EVF. It has the same EVF in this, which this is still one feature this camera is lacking, but in general, I just didn't think it was worth it for the amount of money that you are spending on that camera. But for this camera, I think for the price, it's completely worth it. Now, what are the best features about this camera? Just comparing this camera to my previous camera, which was the a7C, it has that 10-bit 4K, it has, you can shoot in 60 frames per second. I love that it's lightweight, it's compact, it has the ergonomic grip, but also it has a much better viewfinder than it used to have, and it does better in low light because it now has that backlit illuminated sensor, which they didn't have in any previous Sony camera bodies with the APS-C series, like the A6600, the A6100, the A6000, and so forth. This camera body also has those new features like an A7 IV, with this feature right here where you can easily switch between camera and video mode. You can go back and forth really easily like that. And that just makes shooting, like being a hybrid shooter so much easier. I am constantly shooting either photography or I'm shooting video. And to have that feature just makes it a whole lot easier. And another nice feature is that anytime I switch back and forth between camera mode or video mode or S and Q, it's completely different settings. I have it set up so when I'm shooting in camera mode, it's gonna do something completely different than when I shoot in video mode. And that's just a really useful feature to have. I know in previous Sony camera bodies, they have, they have custom buttons one, two, and three. You can see them, they even have them on here, custom buttons one, two, and three. But it seems like anytime I switch to those modes, I there just seems to be some sort of glitchy error. Um, it just doesn't work for me as fluid as just easily switching from photo mode to video mode with that simple switch right there. So this camera, it's definitely the best camera body I've ever used. I actually, it's not that bad to hold on larger lenses, which when I was using the a7C, it was a little bit annoying like gripping it sometimes with larger lenses and I just, didn't put larger lenses on it, I didn't purchase larger lenses, but this camera does a pretty good job with any size lens. It's just the perfect size. It fits in the hand really well. I can grip it with pretty much all my fingers. I mean, my, sometimes the pinky doesn't completely fit, but I can get it on there okay. And it's just because it has that large ergonomic grip that the Sony a7 IV has and any of the a7 series camera bodies. So let me show you what I mean by having a larger lens on it. So here's the a6700, this is the Tamron 50 to 400, and I can easily just pop this off and put it on here. Okay, so right there, holding it with one hand. I mean, it is a little front heavy, but I mean, it's a large lens anyway, so it's gonna be front heavy, but I can just kind of hold it 
like, and have a pretty good grip on it. And as long as I'm using two hands, like that's not gonna be a huge issue for me. Now, another reason I got this camera is I'm using it in combination with the Sony ZV-E1. I know a lot of people don't really like the Sony ZV-E1 because it doesn't have a viewfinder. You can't record for hours. It kind of will overheat over time, which I've never had that issue because I don't really record for long periods of time. But I use it in combination with that camera because I still use all my full frame lenses and I love my full frame lenses and I'm not really ready to get rid of them. And I think that's the, the Sony ZV-1 is like the perfect low light camera, which I kind of prefer just that sensor that it uses. It does really great for video, which that's the camera that I'm actually shooting on right now. And it's nice to just have that full frame camera for any time I'm shooting video. And that's the main reason that I want a full frame camera. And then any times that I want to shoot photo, I can shoot this with this one. I can also shoot with the Sony ZV-1 in photo if I'm doing something in full frame, as long as I'm not doing any cropping and I think it's just a good camera pair if you're shooting photo and video. And then I can also use all my, my APS-C lenses with the Sony ZV-E1. I actually recently purchased the Samyang 12 millimeter F2 to use on the ZV-E1, and that just makes it super nice to be able to use that dynamic active mode where you can get really good stabilization, especially if you're doing any vlogging. And then I can also use the same lens on my A67 camera body, and it's just nice to be able to use that on both cameras. And it's it may be annoying to use like a full frame and an APS-C camera, but I find it to, it to be a little bit more versatile because if I'm doing anything with wildlife, I can, auto, I can crop in to that 1.5 and get amazing shots and not have to buy a larger telephoto lens. Whereas, whereas like any other camera body, I can't really do that unless I buy the Sony A7R5 or the A7C-R, which both those cameras are great, but I just didn't find the features to be perfect for what I need. Now you may think that the A7C-R or the A7R5, like both those cameras would replace this camera setup that I have. I just prefer to have two cameras because I'm always like shooting on one and doing something with the, like doing photo on the other. And you can do that on the, the A7C-R and the A7R5. But the main reason that I didn't want to buy those cameras is I didn't want the larger body. I didn't want the A7R5 just because it's going to be a little bit heavier. And I, it was just like the price, it was really expensive. And then I didn't want the A7CR because it wasn't worth the price. It didn't have a great viewfinder, which if you're going to shell out that much money, I'd want a better EVF and a viewfinder. And then it didn't have a good ergonomic grip. And so that's why I just decided to get the A6700. It's just way better value because it's so much cheaper. It's less than half the price. I mean, I could buy two of these and it would still be cheaper than the A7R5. And so that's why I just decided to go with this camera instead. So that's the main reason I got this camera. I wanted to have a, just another camera for the Sony ZV-1. And then the, the biggest reason why I wanted this camera is just it's lightweight and all the APS-C lenses are so much lighter in weight than the comparable full frame lenses. Like, look at this lens. The Samyang 12 millimeter is tiny. You can't get this small of a lens with a comparable focal length. It's just nicer to have these smaller, lighter lenses on this smaller camera body. And I've been shooting full frame for years and I've just gotten used to shooting with, with larger lenses, but these lenses are so much lighter and it just makes it so much easier if you're doing travel photography, if you're traveling to a destination and you just want a really light setup. And that seems to be like the biggest problem I was having is I didn't want to carry all this gear with me to a location and just having smaller and lighter lenses just makes this like so much easier to take around with me. And another reason is just the price. It's so much cheaper. So I don't care as much about taking it with me everywhere I go, maybe banging it around a little bit more than I would with my full frame lenses and camera bodies because they're so much more expensive. With this camera body, I don't have to treat it as well as my other cameras and lenses because it's like so much cheaper. I think most people, this is the camera you should get. If you're doing both photo and video, you want the highest quality. It can pretty much do everything that the newer camera bodies can do today. And it's just so much lighter, more affordable. And I think it presents a much better value for any other camera body that you can get. So yeah, that's the main reason I got this camera is I just wanna be able to shoot lighter. I'm constantly obsessed with finding lightest gear that I can 
that I can get. Um, if I go backpacking, if I go traveling, it's nice to have a super light, compact camera that's easy to hold in your hand and that you can put pretty much any lens on it. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but another feature that's lacking about the a6700 is it doesn't have that shutter lock, right? So if you want to have less dust on your camera sensor, it won't lock the shutter. It won't keep the shutter down all the time. So you can still get a lot of dust in your sensor. And that's one thing that kind of drove me crazy. I really wish that Sony put that feature in this camera but they didn't. So you're gonna have to deal with a, a sensor that's gonna get a little bit more dusty. Another thing is if you're shooting low light, like if you're doing astrophotography, there's this really cool feature in most Sony camera bodies called Bright Monitor, which you just push the button and it will you can see everything around you really clearly, even though it's really dark. And it's a really cool feature to have. And this camera doesn't have that and that's, Another thing that really bugged me about this, it's just gonna be harder to compose an image because you're not gonna be able to see everything as well with that bright monitor feature, which I really like that. And yeah, unfortunately the Sony a67 doesn't have that feature. So if you're looking for a new camera body and you want something that's affordable and lightweight and can pretty much do everything that any other camera body can do right now today, I would pick up the Sony a6700. I think it's an incredible value for what it can do. It has incredible autofocus. The photos that I've taken with this are really sharp. I don't notice a difference with the dynamic range compared to my full frame cameras. I don't notice a difference in sharpness, in in even megapixels because in post-processing you can even if you want more megapixels you can just jump that up by using adobe's super resolution mode and so that's why i think this camera is just such an incredible value do you think the sony a6700 is worth the value share your comments below please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one and hope you have a great day thanks